amendment be disagreed to? And I call the member for Morton. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. I rise to speak on the Corporations Amendment Improving Outcomes for Litigation Funding Participants Bill 2021 uh, and support the amendment moved by the member for Whitlam. Uh, the Joyce uh, Morrison government and uh, all the speakers that have uh, trotted out in, on their behalf say that the purpose of this bill is to protect the interests of plaintiffs in class actions. That's the furphy being peddled by the coalition. Uh, they say that they're all, all about protecting the exploited, protecting the exploited. No suggestion that people, uh, adults, able to enter into contracts with a law firm funded by uh, uh, financial backers, no suggestion that they have the freedom to enter into that contract. For some reason, when it comes to this type of freedom, to legal freedom, uh, Australians are to be treated like their children, like their children, and that the the Morrison Joyce government is here to rescue these poor exploited people, rather than that uh, that they have the, the ability to enter into a contract by themselves. They clearly say that that's the intention of the bill, but like most things that the Morrison government says, you have to have a look at the fine print to get to the real story. What they actually want this bill to do is to make it more difficult for people, everyday Australians, to bring class actions. The Morrison government is trying to protect wealthy and powerful defendants. This bill was the subject of a short inquiry by the Parliamentary Joint Committee on Corporations and Financial Services. One submitted to this inquiry, uh, Finney MacDonald said, uh, sorry, five Finney MacDonald said that the government is seeking to present this reform as a consumer protection measure is Orwellian gaslighting. <laughs> Further highlighting the idiocy of this legislation is that it is opposed by leading class action defendant lawyers Herbert Smith Freehills. So don't be fooled by the Orwellian title yet again trotted out by the Morrison Joyce government. Like many bills we've seen the coalition ram through this parliament, this bill is friendless. One of the new requirements this bill will implement is that class members agree in writing to be members of a litigation funding scheme and to be bound by the scheme's constitution. This will mean that uh, for a funder to obtain a fee from a claimant, the claimant must be a member of the funding scheme. This is a departure from the current opt-out model where individuals who do not wish to participate in a class action uh, have to opt out. The current model and its advantages are summarised by the Law Council in its submission as follows. Part 4A of the Federal Court of Australia Act 1976, uh, which contains the federal class action regime, operates on the default basis of an opt-out structure. Under this system, a class action can be commenced without the express consent of group members. Uh, instead, the class action defines the group and then a court-approved notice is given to the group members advising that they may exclude themselves from the proceedings by advising the court. The opt-out class action is also referred to as an open class action. The opt-out structure was recommend, recommended by the Australian Law Reform Commission because it promotes access to justice and efficiency. Take note, those officers. Opposite. It promotes access to justice and efficiency. Group members who cannot be identified at the outset, who are unable to elect affirmatively to participate due to social or economic barriers, are not excluded from the legal system and a potential remedy. That is particularly important for large classes of potential claimants in, I say this for the National Party, in rural, regional and remote. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander and or culturally and linguistically diverse community and for those with disability. The opt-out approach also promotes efficiency by including all group members at the outset and binding them unless they opt out to the outcome of the proceedings." End quote. The committee, even in its short inquiry, heard overwhelming evidence that most of the measures in the bill that the Morrison Joyce government has brought to the chamber would leave class action plaintiffs and defendants significantly worse off. For example, the dissenting report from Labor members of that committee said the evidence received by the committee strongly indicated that the overall impact of the rebuttable 70-30 presumption would be to drive up 
litigation costs. Discourage plaintiffs and defendants from settling disputes and so delay their resolution and, more generally, make the law worse for everyone. Moreover, as such a presumption it would also raise the risk for funders, no funding would be available for some meritorious claims and funding costs for all claims will likely be higher than they would otherwise be. So here we go. The party that once upon a time used to believe in free markets and free choice and individual liberties is suddenly going to drive up legal costs and make the uh, avenues available for the vulnerable uh, less attractive. Most submitters argued that rather than resolving uncertainty, uh, uncertainty in the existing law in relation to the availability of common fund orders, as recommended by all members of this committee in December 2020, the bill promotes uncertainty and confusion around common fund orders to the detriment of plaintiffs and defendants in class actions. The third point the committee the Labor members made was that by requiring class members to agree in writing to be members of a litigation funding scheme, submitters have argued that the bill would lead to an increase in the number of closed class actions and this would in turn result in multiple class actions for a given event. Imagine being the insurance company for those companies. There are other concerns about the process in bringing this bill before the parliament. Instead of preparing a comprehensive regulatory impact statement in relation to this bill so that the Treasury and government can understand the regulatory impacts on business, the Treasury certified a report by Liberal members of the parliamentary committee as being an independent review. I, I kid you not, that is actually what happened in 2020-2021 in this parliament. So just to make this a bit clearer, at the Department of the Treasury, the Department of Treasury officials certified a report written by Liberal MPs as being independent and then used that report as the primary justification for a Liberal government policy. I mean, you, you wouldn't do this in a, in a dodgy dictatorship, never mind a, a healthy democracy like Australia. This is unbelievable. It's astounding that that would happen. There are processes to ensure that the parliament knows the impact that bills will have on the wider community and the economy. And the Morrison-Joyce government, you know, the, the car park rorts people, the sports rorts people, the Leppington Land Triangle people, those people have basically said, we know better than the, the, the public officials, just believe us. You know, we, we got the car parks right, you know, building car parks on you know, train lines, uh, outside train stations that are going to be closed down. You know, paying way over, you know, paying way over for, for land for an airport, unbelievable. So there are, there are also some constitutional issues surrounding this bill. The Law Council, former Solicitor General Justin Gleeson, SC, widely respected, and other legal experts have concerns about the constitutionality of this bill. Uh, raised by submitted, some of the, the concerns raised include whether the corporation's power in the Constitution, Section 5120 and or the referral powers to the Commonwealth uh, can support the provisions, whether the provisions would amount to an inconsistency with state class actions provisions so as to override them pursuant to section 109 of the Constitution, including impacts on the group costs order provisions unique to the Supreme Court of Victoria, and potential issues arising in respect of overriding the power of state courts or directing state legislatures. The Morrison-Joyce government has not addressed any of these concerns, either in the explanatory memorandum or by the Attorney-General's department when questioned about these concerns during the inquiry process. There has simply been no explanation or assurances that this bill is constitutional. Yeah, and one would think you'd, you'd, you'd get your house in order before trotting this into the, into the, the chamber. The Attorney-General's department itself appeared to harbour some doubts when questioned during the inquiry process. Justice Speech of the Federal Court of Australia referenced this bill in a recent judgment in Stanwell Corporation Limited uh, and against LCM Funding Proprietary Limited. It considered whether a class action brought against two Queensland state-owned coal-fired power companies was grandfathered for the purpose of the Corporation Amendment uh, Litigation Funding Regulations 2020 from a requirement to be registered as a managed investment scheme. The judgment made some important comments about this bill. 
At paragraph 19, Justice Speech referred to a previous decision which characterised a particular litigation funding scheme as a managed investment scheme. He said, it is arguable that the majority mischaracterised litigation funding arrangements as an investment by group members of property to achieve benefits, when such arrangements principally provide a mechanism for persons who share commonality in their unlitigated and separate choses in action to secure the payment for legal services necessary to vindicate those choses on a contingent basis. End quote. At paragraph 218, Justice Speech also said about this bill. The bill may need to be modified to bring its scope within the referral contemplated by paragraph 5132 of the Constitution bestowed by the States under the Corporations Agreement 2002 as amended, assuming that the approval of the forum constituted thereunder has not been sought, and also assuming that the concept of managed investment schemes under clause 5, uh, 507 subsection 1A is limited to its objectively ascertained meaning as at the inception of that clause, which predated the book fill and was also not affected by or considered under the 2017 amendments. It may need to be modified to address direct or indirect conflicts with the provisions of part 6A of the FCA Act, or at least to deal with the arguable conceptual incoherency in seeking to shoehorn the statutory model for managed investment schemes under the Corporations Act into a funding mechanism designed to facilitate access to justice under the open class regime enshrined in Part 4A, where class actions are controlled by representative applicants with external legal representation and advice and by the court, rather than by a group members exercising their democratic rights under a so-called managed investment scheme or by funders or any other entity expeditionally nominated as a responsible entity. This is an important judgment that provides reasoned commentary about the bill that is now before this parliament, commentary that has not been addressed by the Attorney-General or by the uh, Morrison-Joyce government in any way in the speakers that I have heard on this issue. These issues are not theoretical. The impact of this bill would have real-world impacts for Australians. Litigation funders and plaintiff law firms who gave evidence to this committee uh, inquiry about class actions that would not have taken place if the Morrison-Joyce government had had their way, if they'd got this, litigation, this legislation through. Let's look at them. Uh, Mervyn Street and the State of Western Australia, now known as the Western Australian Stolen Wages Class Action, which is a class action involving thousands of Indigenous Australians in Western Australia whose wages were unjustly withheld or not paid as a result of wage control legislation in effect in, until 1972. Imagine if that had not, not run. Eileen Cummins and the Commonwealth of Australia, a class action involving stolen generation survivors. Imagine being the Attorney General that stopped such an action. Gregory John Lenthal and another uh, against Westpac Banking Corporation, which was a class action alleging that Westpac overcharged its life insurance customers. And I'll touch on that life insurance in, in a minute. Hudson against the Commonwealth, which was an environmental contamination class action against the Commonwealth of Australia, Department of Defence, relating to chemical contamination of Army Aviation Centre at Oakey in Queensland, which resulted in diminution in property and business values. Those PFAS cases would not have occurred if the Morrison-Joyce government had their way. Riley Gell and the Domino's Pizza Enterprises, which was a class action brought on behalf of delivery drivers and in-store workers who alleged systemic underpayment relative to award entitlements, would not happen if the Morrison-Joyce government had their way. Now, some of the uh, speakers opposite uh, obviously have not practised as lawyers. That's fine. We, we, do, we need a, a wide range of people. We need a wide range of people in this parliament. That's important. When I was elected uh, 14 years ago today, 40% uh, of the parliament had a law degree. Uh, I'd, I'd previously worked at Quinnis Catini, uh, not, not in um, personal injury law, but in commercial law, that law firm now, Ryan Murdoch and Regan. Uh, we, they, they dealt in this sort of matter. I need to stress to those opposite, no lawyer can charge for work that they do not do. No lawyer gets paid for work that they, for an hour of work that they have not uh, properly billed. So those opposite talk about shady con contract. The previous speaker talked about shady contracts between people. When really this is all about protecting the wealthy 
from the actions of those who need someone to speak up on their behalf. We need. I, I would urge the, the Parliament to support the amendment moved by the member for Whitlam. Oh,